The bearded iris is such a gorgeous flower. I'm going to show you how I paint this in watercolour and why I include it in my artworks. For more of this kind of content, please like, subscribe and don't forget the notification bell. So I've started with a piece of paper, watercolour paper that has been taped down to a drawing board. I drew a simple outline of the flower that I wanted to include and I started with a light wash of yellow watercolour pigment. Into that wet wash I've started dropping in base colours looking at my reference picture. So there are some pinks and some purples and as that's drying I'm coming in with the very tip of my brush and putting in some line work. I love painting the iris so much. I find the similarities between the female reproductive system and the um, plant reproductive system being the flower is just a really beautiful comparison to put in the kind of works that I do. Have a look here, you can see where I've used the bearded iris in some of my artworks. They blend in quite beautifully. So back to my painting, I have a little bug that keeps crawling over my uh, paper, but that's fine. I'm fine with working with that and um, you'll see him come and go. So I've started with the top petals and I'm putting in a very faint wash and my aim here is to build up as many layers as I can. I like to work with some very light layers to begin with and start working in the shapes. I don't include these kind of areas in my preliminary drawing. This is just an, an outline I have in my drawing and then I start working in areas like this. I was just working on the stem. I had a light wash of a pale green and I dropped in some yellow and came in with a much deeper green. I'm not really going into the names of the colours as much as um, I could right here. If that's something that you would like me to go into the paints that I use, let me know in the comments and I can do that for you. But really, I think with paints, it's more effective using the right warm and cool colours. So you've seen me lay down lots of juicy colour onto dry paper. I then wet the paper around that shape that I created being the leaf and gently touched the pigment pooling and let that actually flow out into the wash. I'm going to do that again in a moment so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, with that top leaf up there you can see a bead or a pool of paint begging to flow into a wash. And here you go. I put some water on the side and I've just encouraged that to come out and it's actually leaving some lovely wash and um, blending color on the paper. You can see I've done that again here. I'm actually using pigments that I had inside the petal and I'm marrying uh, the the colors from the flower, the petal and the flower into the background with the greens. And I think that this creates a really lovely atmospheric area. So often it's hard to know what to do in the background. And I, and I just love bleeding those colors out and letting that happen. Um, it creates a really spontaneous, beautiful surprise, which I just really love. So dropping some more watercolors in, this is a wet and wet technique and now working on some of the drier area with that petal there i've come in and i'm i'm deepening the colors of the petal so right now like this this whole painting took four hours and there was drying time so it was painted over two days this has been condensed down to an eight minute video so if you would like to see more in-depth, slower tutorials of step-by-step -step and actually see maybe not four hours, but perhaps two hours or however long I'm able to put um, upload onto YouTube, let me know in the comments if that's something of interest. I don't want to go ahead and um, upload it if it's something that no one's going to be interested in watching. Um, here I am coming in and putting all the veins and line work into the top petals. Um, in a moment I'll drop my resource picture back in so you can have another look and see what I'm doing. 
Okay, here we go. So this is the resource picture that I used for this artwork. I actually got this picture from, I think it was Pinterest or somewhere like that. I'd love to know who the original photographer was so I could credit them. If you know, let me know. I'll pop it in the comments so I can credit them as being the inspiration for this painting and send it to them as well. Have a look at the background at the left hand side behind, at the bottom of the petal. See how the different colours have dried? They've granulated on the paper. So there's actually a mix of a beautiful, uh, I think, imperial purple and some dusty pinky purple hues as well. And I just love that. You really can't plan that kind of thing. You've just got to lay the paper, the paint down on the paper and see what happens. Right, so I have been coming in and laying down some more fine line work, thickening up areas where there is more tonal depth to the petals and bringing in more interest, making it a bit more dramatic. And I really love that about this painting. I actually feel like it is quite dramatic. I love how the colors have worked out as you'll see in the end. And I think it works really harmoniously. So just using the very tip of my brush again here and creating really delicate, fine line work showing the different veins of the petals and how the petal is formed, how it actually all comes together. Um, these beautiful lines is one of the reasons why I really love it. And I find a lot of these types of lines and creases and folds also in uh, the human body. And I won't go too much into that that, um, that I need to right now. I think if you follow my work you'll, you'll know what I mean. So I use Daniel Smith watercolors almost exclusively. I recently got these brushes and they're fantastic and I'm working with Bao Hong paper. This is a hot press paper. It's also new for me. I haven't used this one before but I'm really enjoying its texture and the way the paint lays down. Paint laying down lots of juicy color here and I'm starting to have a look and see what finishing touches need to be done. This is a really good time to look at the painting and look at the tonal values, see what needs more tone, needs an idea of uh, shadow, what areas that I might want to leave brighter and what areas I want to darken. And last final touches here. And all that is left is to sign my name and to remove the tape from around the border. I love it when I can see the artwork without the tape and it's so nicely framed by the white border. Thank you so much for my Patreon subscribers. You get to download this artwork and have it for keeps. Thanks everybody else for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe.